to stop. The Vampire the Second is a tier 10 destroyer sailing under the Commonwealth flag but came specifically from the land down under. Being a brother from another mother, it gets distinct quirks to distance it from the daring while also maintaining its identity as a daring class, topped off by being a freemium. And you know that this bad boy is gonna be awesome because it has two eyes in its name. We start with the guns. Despite having laughable caliber, it gets 2.5 seconds reload, slightly faster than the daring. That allows it to dump 300,000 cunts per minute to anything broadside, which by the way, made better by also having improved bounce angle, right there between the colonizer and the colonizer wannabe. This is especially effective against destroyers, the small caliber allows full penetration on broadsides, while the improved auto bounce means more penetrating hits, with precise aim, you can completely delete any destroyer in a single broadside, if you manage to surprise them, which is possible with the 5.8 km concealment, a very stealthy number, for something with cruiser level DPM. Oh no the enemy is angling, fret not, by switching to AG. You gained access to the best fire starting destroyer in the game, with up to 10% fire chance. It is only apparent when you start spamming battleships, that these numbers are not lying to you. Two fires are not uncommon, and always work when the enemy ship just had their damage control on cooldown. Trust me, it works every time. Best of all, you can do all of this, for prolonged amount of time with minimal risk, made possible by calling smoke generator. That falls between a diesel runaway and a pyroclastic flow when it comes to creating pollution. It allows you to move while staying concealed, albeit at very slow speed, which gives flexibility, but has a side effect of showing everyone on the enemy that you have chronic flatulence condition, lasting 2 full minutes, so they will know your whereabouts. Another difference to the daring is having normal hydro. This gives it the ability to cosplay as German destroyer, but with crazy main gun DPM and actually decent shells. When combined with the smoke and its ridiculously low firing penalty, anything within 5km will regret playing World of Warships expecting to find fun. It is also good for catching pesky submarines at periscope depth, but it doesn't have the extended hydro duration, so keep that in mind if you decide to chase subhumans. Next we talk about the repair party. Hold on a second, it doesn't have one. Oh well, I guess this ship is officially F tier. It gets engine boost instead, since the ship's propulsion uses Vegemite for lubrication. And for the record an engine boost is never an alternative to repair party. This is not the afterburner version, or we're on a destroyer that is particularly fast to begin with. Because in World of Warships, actually surviving is a much bigger deal, and this ship have assigned too much points to offensive skills it has forgotten how to protect itself. Not just against the ship it's bullying, but also against 5 other guys that could either be the enemy or friendly. It's hard to satisfy everyone when you're on a ship with very high influence and potential. Here is what you do. You want to be in places, where you can both isolate an enemy destroyer, and avoid focus fire from his team, while also staying in front of your own team. Fortunately, you are in one of the best ship to do it, thanks to the concealment. And by the way, taking radio location is not necessary, because it performs best when it gets the jump on people. Surprise! If you're not living through government funding, 
you can predict enemy destroyer location by using common sense, or you can just use the game objectives as hints. Pay attention to your surroundings, then shoot at whoever spotting you, as you will also spot him at roughly the same time. But if you outspots it by miles, it is most likely a gun boat, and you will be in a world of pain, so take extra caution. This also applies against other hydro carrying destroyer. Depending on how you pull it off, you either dominate him and lose nothing, or earn the hit victory, if he's not an idiot with too much obsession with torpedoes. No matter how it goes, a dead destroyer is preferred, or at the very least make him traumatized enough after the brief encounter with mighty Australia. Are you getting detected by radio location? Then you go defensive, and let him come. Nothing beats clapping people who are trying to flank only to face a destroyer with one of the highest DPM in the game, that can't get out spotted. After you clear out the destroyers, you can relax for a bit, by camping in your portable dust storm, and spamming German battleships equipped with full secondaries build. You can even isolate battleships that push too far, as you can spot them by yourself and kill it, without rushing. Thanks to having single launch torpedoes, you can precisely snipe battleships angling towards you, and hit every one of them. You only have a set of 5 torpedoes, and they are slow, but they have absurd range, unfairly low reaction time, and high torpedo damage, while also spammable enough to be thrown anywhere, to get those lucky random hits, that magically wins the game for you. They are most effective for digging out camping spots, hitting desperate people who wants to be on TV, and against rushing enemy, which is usually what happened when your team is losing, as the souls of your dumb teammates start seeping to the enemy, and don't forget to use single launch, to clap cruisers that got too close. While this ship is excellent at dealing with single target, it's really bad at crowd control. So when you have to deal with a group of homeless people, you chat your team for help. Because you are in a ship that can't do anything else but team play. So chances are they will help you. And nothing felt better than a working team. Once you notice your team is clearly winning, it's back to the usual gameplay loop of do whatever the fuck you want. Spamming cruisers behind cover and laugh as they try to shoot you back. Spamming battleships in open water to show the enemy that they're on destination the fuck. But always pay attention to leftover enemy destroyer. If you're lucky enough, you might rudely interrupted by one who thinks that you owe him a beer. Do remember that once you get comfortable, it gets easier to be complacent. You either overextend and eat a ton of focus, being too obvious inside the smoke, outrunning the smoke because you are not in one quarter speed, or just being too good to ignore. But at least you learned something out of it, and in World of Warships, you do not question anything. Especially the amount of torpedoes I have to find for this obligatory segment. This is how you equip the convict airing. You take preventative maintenance, last stand, survivability expert, and concealment. Then take superintendent, main battery specialist, consumables enhancements, and adrenaline rush. For the upgrades take main armament mod 1, engine room protection, smoke generator mod 1, steering gears, concealment, and main battery mod 3. The Vampire the Second is a versatile ship. If you're looking for a hydro equipped freemium destroyer for clubbing seals in random battles, with great DPM, hydro, and smoke that lasts longer than German battleships in European server, it's not to be messed with, and all you need to do is having proper trigger discipline. Some people argue that daring is a better choice, as it gets repair party and team play oriented smoke, but it's British, which is not preferred, and also not a freemium, which is a major deal breaker. 
so get yourself the Vampire the Second for a low low price of 55,000 research points, which is like one tech tree reset away from the best battleship in the game. But I digress, if you reach this point, you made up your mind already. At the very least, it's a free me and daring, a solid reliable destroyer, good for solo play, and grinding captains for the not so royal navy. Oh, belly whacker face plant. Speaking of vampires, did you hear about the one that joined the navy? He wanted to be a battleship. I don't think it's funny. I'm from the land of London.